So hi everyone, my name is Katrine and I work for the CTRL. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to mention a few things. Captioning is available for this session. To turn on captions, there should be an option at the bottom of the screen in the Zoom toolbar that says show subtitles. If you do not see it, you may need, you may need to click on more to see that option. Also, there will be an anonymous survey posted at the end of the session as well as a QR code that you can scan with your phone. Um, with that being said, I will just turn it over to our presenter. Thank you. Thanks, Katrine. And hello, everybody. How are you? Well, happy uh, Thursday. Um, so we are going to be doing a session on how to use the open source program called To Get. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And if I can get a thumbs up from somebody that says they can see it, awesome. So again, like I said, welcome to, to GET. Um, so I think it's really important to give the developers their flowers um, when talking about any program. So this um, program was created by the husband of Vicki Ramp Rampin, who is a data librarian over at NYU in data services. Um, if you have any additional questions about TOGET, you can email them at hi at toget.org, or you can always reach out to me um, about using TOGET. So our agenda for today is the welcoming session goals, what is TOGET, getting access to get to TOGET, and let's practice with an interview guide, um, and using a code book in TOGET and how to book a consultation with me. So... I think it's really important to identify what um, Cactus is. Cactus is, includes, so it's a computer-assisted qualitative data analysis program. It includes features to keep highlight code and annotate and link source materials. It helps with analysis, but also with data management practices. There's definitely mixed feelings about Cactus, about using Cactus because of the fetishization of codes over deep engagement with resources and concerns over privacy of the data, okay? And if anybody has any questions, you can feel free to just chime in, raise your hand, not raise your hand, um, or just put in the chat. So our session goals for today include describe how to upload transcription or other documents into to get, implement uh, correct processes, processes to decode transcript appropriately, describe steps of how to work collaboratively with others on the platform, use skills gained to tag and annotate on the document. And we went over the housekeeping, um, the you're on mute by default. Um, like I said, just raise your hand. This is being recorded as Katrine said, okay? So what is to get? To get is a text tagging available on desktop or the server. Right now, um, folks should have it on their desktop you don't already, we do not have it on our server because that requires extra steps that just don't work um, here right now. Right now, just, we just don't have that. Um, why do you want to use to, to get? Um, because it's available on all operating systems. So Macs, PCs, um, real-time collaboration, easy to learn and use, and it's self-hostable, just like I said. Um, the data remains local, and it is multilingual. The only reason it can be used as multilingual is if you use the server. So that's something to, to that's something that's really important to point out. So if you are just using it online, um, like I sent everybody the link, you won't be able to use it multilingual. Getting access to get. Um, so this link right here is created created using this particular um, link but you want to go to app.toget.org, which is the same link that um, Katrine put into the chat. This will allow you to collaborate with others, but it's it's really kind of, it's really interesting of how you can collaborate with others. And we'll try to practice using it in this session. So when you log into Toget, and I think folks should have already had this opportunity to do so, you're going to make sure that you type in a login, your password, confirmation, confirm your password and email, and then accept the terms of service. Okay. 
again, some of the motivation and goals related to TIGET, um, qualitative methods generate rich, detailed research materials from um, that leave individuals' perspectives intact, as well as provide multiple contexts for understanding the phenomenon under study. Qualitative methods are used by a wide range of fields, such as anthropology, education, nursing, psychology, sociology, and marketing. Qualitative data has this, it has a similarly wide range, which includes observations, interviews, documents, audiovisual materials, and much more. So it's really important to note that by using to get, um, you're not going to have access to use um, audiovisual materials. So it's just text based. And this is the team that has developed to get. Okay. Again, I just really think it's important to give the folks who develop the program their flowers. So to get is like baguette. Thank goodness we just had the Olympics in Paris. So it's like baguette, <laughs> but with a T. And also you want to play the play on tag it. So to get baguette with a T. Purely text tagging, desktop or server um, um, capabilities. It's built with using Python 3 and Calibri um, and SQLite. And then Remy, who is the other, the, the, the developer, uh, runs a hosted version of to get for users on the app to get.org. So that's with, again, the link that I sent to everybody. Um, I will say that I personally am not familiar with Python 3 or SQLite. That is more of a quant uh, field kind of thing. So I just really want to emphasize that. A reminder that it is available on all systems, operating systems. It works the same on all these operating systems. Real-time collaboration, easy to use, self-hostable. The data remains local. So if you're using it on a desktop, data, the data remains local to computer. And it's multilingual only if you're using the server. So I think that's really, really important. OK, so I'm going to stop sharing and then um, switch over to the actual to get. Um, so give me one second. Does anybody have any questions so far? I have a quick question. Sure. Um, you mentioned that the data is stored locally. Um, when you upload the data to the site, do you know how it's protected or um, when you upload your data to their platform? So from my understanding, it's saved. Um, it's it's not like in vivo where it's on an encrypted system. So it's it's just there. I don't know if you're asking me if it's encrypted, I don't think it is encrypted, but from my understanding, it's as protected as much as possible because right. you're, yeah. So um, your password is like, it's, it's password protected. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. But I can double. I can definitely double back and just ask the. I can ask uh, Vicky as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I was just wondering yeah. for IRB yeah. purposes, making sure. Of course. It. Yep. Thank no you. problem. I understand. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add the document here. Um, so everybody should have gotten in the um, document that I'm using which was actually an in vivo document. Um, I just downloaded it and the interview, I downloaded the interview and saved it to my desktop. Um, so I'm gonna choose it from my desktop, which is William, open it, which is right here. Wait, everybody can see my screen, right? <laughs> I just need a yes. Okay, thanks, Aaron, got the thumbs up. And I'm going to put it left to right because this particular document is read left to right and not right to left. Um, and again, there are some languages that do read right to left and you can change that language, but it's only if it's connected to the server, not if you're hosting it yourself. And I'm just going to put in the, 
in the a quick description interview um, 2009. And then I'm going to import it. And again, if you are from, if you're familiar with in vivo, this is the um, example um, interview that's used in in vivo. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to highlights and interesting will always be the very first, um, will always be the very first highlight or um, tag, I'm sorry, the very first tag you'll see. It's just automatically there. You can always delete it. So what I'm going to do is delete it. So I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to hit delete tag. And that's going to ask me if that's okay. I'm going to say, okay. So right now there are no tags in, in um, this particular document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly glance over Okay, what are some of my um, what are some of my themes that I want to pull out? So one of my themes is maybe I want to talk about um, years, years in um, township. I'm gonna save and close. And William says right here, I've owned my house in a straight township in Ottawa for three years. I'm going to highlight it. New highlight. Years in township. And I'm going to save and close. As you can see here, it's highlighted yellow. If you're looking for any other colors, unfortunately, it doesn't provide to get doesn't provide different colors like in Vivo or maybe to do's or maybe even in Atlas TI. Um, it's all in yellow. So I'm going to stop right there and ask if anybody has any questions so far. Fantastic. All right. And I'm just going to double check my notes to make sure that I am <laughs> on pace. So what I want to do now is let's say that I want to add, I'm going to create another tag. And let's say that I want to add environmental or environment, excuse me. Save and close. And I'm going to create another tag. It says environmental or environment dot place. The only reason that I'm doing environment.place is that this allows me to see multiple tags or how environment is dot place is nestled under environment. So if I click on environment, there's no tags right now. But we go back to the document. Let's say that I want to highlight. Just make another highlight. So hot ways a great location. You see it's very quiet, but close enough to the waterfront in Beaufort to walk or go out to Harker's Island. So we're just gonna highlight this sentence. I'm gonna click new highlight. I'm gonna say environment, actually environment.place, save and close, and then I'm going to take the next sentence. I'm going to highlight this and click new highlight. And then I'm going to highlight, or sorry, excuse me, click environment, save and close. And as you can see here, you can see I've got three highlights. If I click on environment, you can see environment here. If I click on environment.place, you can see that I have the um the the quote here. I should be able to see a second how it's nestled under. Hold on. There it is. So if I see all my highlights, I can see. Yes, Cynthia, go ahead. 
Hi. Um, because it's all in yellow, if you hover your cursor, does the name of the tag pop up in the document? Yes, it does. Okay. Thank so you. if I go, yeah, no problem. So if I go back to back to it, it should. Yep. So if I highlight it, got it. You can see years and township. Oh, thank you. Yep, no problem. And the same thing for the next one environmental environment dot place. So I'm actually gonna go back to another project. I believe that it's already highlighted more. Let me just double check. Actually, it's not highlighted. I thought I did, but it's not. Um, if you want to see all your tags highlighted and associated, let me go back to the document. If you want to see all of the highlighted text associated with a given tag, first go to the highlights tab in the left pane, click a tag in the right, in the left pane. So click a tag and you'll see a list of quotes. So that's just like what I showed you before. Okay. So now I want to, let's say I want to export my code book. So let's say my code book exists. So I want to export it. So what I want to do is click export. And let's say I want to export it in a CSV file. So obviously like a CSV and Excel, it's still on a spreadsheet. You can do that, or you can export it in, a, in uh, Microsoft Word or an HTML as well. So I'm going to export it in a CSV file. I'm going to label it Codebook 2 to not confuse it. I'm going to click on it. And then this is how it'll look in your code book. Um, I don't know. Can I get a thumbs up if somebody can see my Excel sheet? Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. So these are my tags. It's really important to have descriptions when you're doing this. I didn't put a description in and the number of highlights. So this is what it will look like from Excel. Okay, I'm just gonna close this. I'm not gonna save it. Let's say that I wanna import, let's say I already have a um, code book that I wanna use. So I'm gonna import that code book. So I click import. I'm gonna choose a file. And this is my regular code book. I click open. I might want to just review it. So here we go. Attraction to um, this particular county, environment, environment.production, family, home ownership. As you can see here, I can, um, I actually gave a description to all of these. And now I'm going to click create tags. I'm going to go to highlights. As you can see, my um, tags are now here. Does anybody have any questions about what I just did? And I know sometimes I go a little fast until I'm, I'm doing my best to slow myself down when I, I just get excited talking about this particular program because it's really it's really fun to play with. So if I click environment, here we go. That's what I was looking for. So if I click environment and then environment.protection, you see how it's highlighted in blue? That means that environment.protection 
will nestles under um, environment. So it just means that it's your your parent child code, like that information that you could still use. Um, that that's that's language that's still used in Invivo. So like the parent code would be environment, and then child code would be env environment dot protection. I'm not really sure why environment. Oh, well, maybe it's because I didn't spell it correctly. Environment dot place. So let's try spelling it correctly. There we go. So now you can see that these three are nestled under environment. So I'm going to go back to the document. My highlights again. And again, you can see all this, all of the, the entire document, and you can just highlight and then move it over. Uh, I'm th sorry, not, not move it over, but highlight and then tag it. So let's say that I want to merge. Um, merge something uh, or merge a tag. So let's say I'm just going to highlight something random here. Um, so I'm going to click new highlight and then I'm going to click home ownership, save and close. So let's say I want to merge home ownership into yours in township. I would click on home ownership and then click merge. And then I would click years in township and then click merge tags. So as you can see now, what was in home ownership is now called years in township. And if I hover over, I should, Say years in township. It's a little fickle. There it goes. Years in township. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions so far? So I, I think one of the reasons that I'm personally attracted to this type of program is that it's really good for novice users who are just, do, again, this is text-based only. So people who are new to doing qualitative research, people who are new to um, using thematic analysis, um, this is something that's really, it's it's not complicated. Like maybe, again, people have different experiences with Invivo. Personally, Invivo is not one of my favorite programs, um, but it's not complicated to use. Um, I know a lot of people are have said, oh, it's all in yellow. Again, it's supposed to, um, be very similar to how we used to do paper and pen or paper and highlighter. So this is a highlighter. Your highlighter would be yellow and you'd be highlighting, you would be coding your text that way. Okay. So does anybody have any other questions for me? So if I wanted to, let's say that I want to export, yes, export project export project, I can do that. So I'm going to export my project. It should work. Not going to work. Hold on for one second. Click the wrong button. Sorry about that, folks. Here it is, export this view. So let's say I want to export this view in PDF or um, in Microsoft Word. Let's actually do Microsoft Word. And I exported William dot William 2. As you can see here, you can actually see the um, the entire document with in a different color is the code. So I think that's kind of neat. You know, you're not actually rustling through papers or trying to find it, um, find your codes, but this is your code right here. Okay. 
with your highlighted quotes. So now if I wanted to add a collaborator, what I would do is manage collaborators and I would put their username and I can give them full permissions, excuse me, can't change collaborators, delete project, view and make changes or view only. So what I would do is hit full permissions and then put in their username. Now, the catch 22 about doing it this way or about using collaborators is that you cannot, and I'm gonna use the word obscure code, um, other, familiar term is blind coding. You can't do blind coding because they're going to see everything that you've already coded. Um, so that's something to just note when doing this. Okay. Cancel. All right. So that is the original William interview. Um, I know I took my time to go through it. If I, I you know, if I went too fast, please let me know. Does anybody have any questions about to get? And it was really a just an overall view of how to use to get. Um, I can follow up with I believe that was that Cynthia that asked the question about um, being able to make sure that it was encrypted. Your information is encrypted. I will definitely send send get in touch with Vicky to double check on that. But otherwise. Are there any other questions? You've got like 20 minutes. <laughs> Aaron. Yeah, I'm just curious. Um, I, I think the uh, the things you've highlighted, the simplicity, very, very useful here to get folks into this. Beyond um, downloading, you know, the, the kind of, as you said, exporting the project or downloading the code book and seeing the counts of codes, are there other ways that there are kind of analytical features built in to see overlaps of codes or where, you know, things might intersect and things like that? Or is that best seen through like, you know, the export this view and seeing how stuff has been tagged? So the best way to, so I'm gonna, and everybody can still see my screen, right? So I think the best way to do that, like seeing how themes intersect is like, I just clicked on environment and you can see environment.place and then environment, I, there's nothing for environment.protection here. So that's the best way to do it. I think um, there is, I mean, I think the other way, which is to export the view, like you can export each view. So if I want to export this view, I can. Um, but that's the easiest and most simple way to to see how your themes may overlap. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. You're welcome. And I definitely think, like I said before, I think that this is really a good program for students. Um, I know a lot of students come to me asking me like, how can you show me in vivo? And I'm like, well, your professor should be showing you how to use in vivo. And there's a lot of other programs that are out there. Um, Cause in vivo is not necessarily the most, is the easiest program to work with. Um, again, it's like saying, are you an Android user or are you a, um, a Mac or an Apple person, you know? Um, so having said that, that's kind of how I look at using this open source program. I mean, th this really allows a user to highlight, get a little dirty with their with their research, you know, and and it's open source. So, are there any other questions? I'm gonna get out of this project. And I don't think I started another project. Let me double check. Nope. So I thought I had started, I was playing around with it and I thought I had started another project with it, but this was the original William in, um, interview. Highlights from William interview number two. Again, this was, um, some of the codes that I came up with for that home ownership appears twice, but you can delete it. All right, so any other questions?
I don't have a question, thank but thank you, Tiffany. This yeah. is helpful. You gave us a good overview. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And then I have a question for everybody else. Is anybody teaching a research methods class this semester? Oh, you are, Erin? Fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm teaching our intro to research methods class. The one in which I know you know that I usually use in vivo happens in the spring. Um, right. But I'm teaching the intro that feeds, some students feed into that and other methodologies. Uh, so this semester is the intro class. Okay. So if you can do me a favor, because I will forget myself between now and 20 minutes from now, email me because what we are doing is this year, we are doing a faculty spotlight and for people who are teaching research methods and in CTR, well, we're, it's kind of like a blog, uh, but highlighting faculty members who are teaching research methods, like what are the resources that you use, um, things that you're willing to share with our community. So that's one. And then two, um, we, I and my myself and my colleague and dear, dear friend, uh, Dr. Lizzie Bartell from the University at Buffalo, we have a, um, a podcast called Calling Outside the Memos. It's a qualitative podcast. I'm going to put the link in the chat. Um, and there you go. We just had, and thank you so much, Margaret. Um, we have episodes on doing research on the cheap, um, a conversation with Dr. Lucia Guerra Reyes, who was on my dissertation committee. Um, if you are interested in being a part of the podcast, definitely reach out to me, Erin. I might be, you might have to have a conversation <laughs> if you want to be on the podcast. Um, but that would be really great if anybody else is interested, take a look at it. We do talk about positionality. Um, if you haven't checked out my positionality statement or positionality um, article in the beat that was done two years ago, definitely check it out. Um, and yeah, that's about it. We definitely talk about working. How do you work with communities and not, you know, the most importantly, how do you work with communities and doing community based participatory research? So this, those are some things that we talk about on the podcast. All right. Well, without further ado, I don't want to take all your time. If if uh, I'm going to give you time back, um, this was the quick and dirty <laughs> part of using um, to get. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions about using to get in your classroom, please don't hesitate to re reach out. And I would highly, highly, highly suggest um, folks using to get um, for their students in their classroom. It's free, so definitely take something that's free that's out there. You're welcome, everyone. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and definitely fill out the um, the evaluation. The training. I'm just putting it on. 